So today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the achievement system and to create some basic achievements for your game. What you'll see here is I have more or less a, um, a new project. I've added a few resources to make things simpler a little later, but I don't have any scenes and I don't have anything in my hierarchy. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new scene. and save it. We'll call it demo scene. And now that's our scene. We'll go ahead and import the scripts that we need. The achievement system requires the UP messenger component. So we'll start with importing that. If you don't already have this component, it's available for free from unityprefabs.com. Then we have UP Messenger. Now, optionally, you can import the notification system. I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I won't be covering in depth how to set up the notification system in this video it's an optional component, you don't have to have it. There we go, and then finally I will import the achievement system itself. See it has quite a few more files than the others. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create an empty game object. I'm going to rush through creating the notification system just because that is not the focus of this video. So bear with me one moment. Okay, so now we want to create the Achievement Manager. I recommend that you make one of these in every scene in your game. So you may want to uh, save it as a prefab when you're done at the end so you can easily recreate all the work you're going to do. First thing we do is create an empty game object and we're going to name it Achievement Manager. You can name this anything you like, it doesn't matter, but it may as well be Achievement Manager for clarity. Now there's a few components we have to add to this. The obvious one would be the Achievement Manager itself. But there are two components that are required for use of the Achievement Manager. One, a Achievement Data Loader. We provide uh, an XML version for you here. So we're going to go ahead and assign that. And we also need a a uh, component that stores uh, the player's progress towards these achievements. We've created one that stores this in the player preferences within Unity. So we're going to assign that as well. And now your inspector on the Achievement Manager looks like this with three components. You'll notice that there are some uh, special UI elements to these components that we'll get to in a moment. For now we're going to finish setting up the Achievement Manager itself. You see we have a property here called Achievement Data Loader and Achievement Progress Storage. These refer to the two components that we've just created so we'll simply connect them now. Achievement Loader here and Progress Storage here. We also have a spot for a GUI skin. I've created a default skin here. And we're doing this demo in C-sharp, so we can leave this set to C-sharp. We'll get to this later. I have included some icons and a sound effect. So we'll set a default sound effect by dragging this audio clip to the default sound effect setting. We don't have to create any more here in the uh, sound effects array. You can if you like. 
If you don't, then any achievement will always use this default sound. The icons work the same way. We'll, we can drag a texture here to the default icon setting. Uh, any achievement uh, that doesn't have an icon will use this icon. Uh, but if we want special icons, and I've, I've made two here, so we'll set two up. one and two. Now we can have achievements with two different icons if we choose to. We'll get to how you set that in a moment. But now we've uh, completely configured the achievement manager. Um, our next step of course would be to you know make some achievements. That's the whole point of this. The XML uh, achievement Loader has a facility for editing achievements. Um, I have already included a file here with two set up just to make this go faster to demonstrate, but normally you wouldn't have any. Uh, you'll always see uh, achievements not loaded when you first look at, at the uh, XML resource loader. We have a property here that tells you what file name it will use to both load and save. Uh, you see that it says achievements by default. It's achievements over here. Um, and then there's a resource folder. Uh, by default we put this in the resources folder in the root of your project. You may move this to a folder deeper within the project but the folder itself must be called resources in order for the XML resources to find it. Uh, Unity includes any files in the resources folder in your build project automatically. Uh, if you don't put it in a folder called resources, it will be left out and won't work at runtime. Uh, the system will warn you if you choose a, a name that's not appropriate. So, I mentioned earlier that we already have some achievements set up. If I press the load achievements button, the, uh, the component goes and loads them from the achievements file here. and we can now work on them. Uh, you'll see there are two. If I click on one, I get its details down here. I can change its identifier. The identifiers must be unique. If we change this to say identifier one, when we already had a one, you'll see these now say duplicate because they're both one. So we'll change this back to zero and everything becomes happy again. The achievement has a name, description, points, secret setting, yes or no, how many times it must be uh, earned in order to unlock, an icon ID and a sound effect ID. I'm not going to go too much into these other properties, they're in the manual, but the IDs I should point out, these relate to the um, the icon and the sound effect array up here. So if we say uh, icon ID 0, that means this achievement is going to look for the z element 0 in the icon array, which will get this uh, little electricity icon. If we set that to 1, it would use this dragon skin icon thing. If you set it to anything that doesn't actually exist in the array up here, it will use the default this sound effects work exactly the same way. If you have this array with elements, you can set the ID to the element, and if it doesn't exist, you'll get the default sound effect. If you make any changes here, you simply press the Save button, and your achievement file is saved. We can make a new achievement by clicking here you'll see it comes up with an ID that is a duplicate by default. We have to change that to say 3. My new achievement. This is a test. And that's fine for the rest. We'll just uh, save. If you want to be sure that it did save, you can press reload and you'll see that you still get all three back. Um, 
one setting I would like to point out is that on the achievement progress storage, there's a checkbox called disable saving. This is useful for development when you don't want um, an achievement that you unlock during testing to stay unlocked through future testing sessions. You can check this and um, saving won't occur. Just make sure that you don't ship a game with this setting on or the players will become pretty frustrated. If you want to delete an achievement you've created, you can select it and press delete. If you made a mistake, you can at this point reload. It will tell you that um, you have unsaved changes and you'll lose those changes. That's what we're going for here. And you'll see that the achievement came back. In this case, I really do want to delete it. And then I'll save that. Now if I hit reload, you see it doesn't come back. I only have the first two that I started with. So there is one other... Um, element that we should cover in the inspector and that's this generate enumeration button. Uh, 